In this video, we're going to be looking at the domain and the range uh, from the graph of a continuous function. And unlike the last video, if you watched that, these are actually going to be curves and lines instead of just points, which were discrete. Okay, so we need to find out all that exists between the beginning of the graph and end when it comes to domain and range. Let's recall this. If you have an open circle on a graph like this one down here, for instance, then that means the value is excluded. Okay, so you won't, you won't include that value, and that means you'll use a parentheses when you're writing your uh, domain and range. And if this is what you see, like here, a solid dot, then it's included. Okay, and that way you use brackets. Okay, and also remember that when you write your domain and range, you go from your smallest value to your largest value, at least the greatest uh, for domain and range. Okay, so let's take a look at this first one here. So we let's do the domain first. Remember, that's the set of x values. So as you move left to right on the graph, so as I move left to right, say with this pin, as I move this way, I first intersect the graph right there at negative 2. Okay, remember I'm moving left to right because this is the domain, which is the x-axis. So the first time that my pin touches the graph is at negative 2, so that's the beginning. And since it's a closed dot, I will use a bracket and say at negative 2 we began. And then you keep going, keep going until the graph ends, and the graph ends right there at what looks to be 3. And that point is not included because it's an open circle. Okay, so we'll do that. Now let's look at the range, which means that we're going to start, remember, from the least to the greatest. So the least is down at the bottom, right? And we move up. So if we go up on the y-axis, I touch the graph with my pen right there at negative 4. So negative 4 will be the first number. Now since that is an open dot, that's a parentheses. Okay, and then we move up 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 and you might want to stop here because that's kind of where the graph ends over here but we're going up we're going to go up until there is no more graph so that point doesn't mean anything to us and the graph seems to end right there at five so that's where i will put that and since there's no open dot there you can assume that it includes that point so we'll put a five with a bracket okay let's take a look at the domain and range on this next one so the domain, remember, you move from left to right. So we start here, and it looks like I hit the graph first at negative 4. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And I stop hitting the graph at 5. So negative 4 to 5. Negative 4 to 5. And since they're both open dots, then I'll give them both parentheses because those points are not included. Now for the range, we start at the bottom. We hit the graph first at negative 4. And then how high does it get before there's no more graph? It looks like 5 on the y-axis is as high as it gets. So negative 4 to 5 as well. And also parentheses on both of those. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. So we've got domain. We move from, right, or from left to right until I hit the graph with my pen. And it looks like it's hitting that graph right there at negative 1. So negative 1 is the first number, and then as I move the pin over until I intersect the graph again, that happens at, let's see, 4. Okay, so 1 to 4. Negative 1 to 4, excuse me, and parentheses, since neither one of those points are included with the open dots. Now we start from the bottom, move up until we hit the graph. Looks like my pin hits the graph right there at negative 5 on the y-axis. And since there's no open dot there, I can assume that that point does exist. So I'll put a bracket with a negative 5. And then I keep going up until there's no more graph. We can keep going past this point because I still have graph. So I keep going up until there is no graph, and that is 4. 4, and since it's an open dot, that will be a parentheses. Okay, these next three I'm going to do a little bit faster. So taking a look at the domain, it looks like... This is the first place to the left, so that's a negative 3. Since that is a solid dot, I get a bracket, and I keep going to the right until there's no more graph. That looks like 2, 3 is the end of this graph, so comma 3, and that's an open dot, so parentheses. 
And now for range, you start at the bottom, look up, and there's the beginning of the graph. You can put your pin there. Just because it hits in the middle, it could hit anywhere, remember, because it's just move your pin up until you hit the graph. So that's negative 4, and we'll include it since there's no open dot. And then we go up until we no longer see the graph, and it's right there. Now that's the question. Do we include the point or not include the point because one has an open dot and one has closed? The answer to that is since one of them is an open dot, that means this value does exist. So one of them exists. So, so we can say it's a bracket. So it goes to five with a bracket. Okay. Domain on this, it moves from negative one, included, to four, excluded. And then range, it starts down here at negative five on the y axis, included because there's no open dot. And it goes all the way up to 4, and that's also included. Okay, and then the last one here. So domain starts here at negative 3. That's included because of the solid dot. And it keeps going right until it gets to 5. That's not included because it's an open dot. So parentheses. Okay, and then range, you start at negative 3 is where it is right here and that is going to be a solid dot so negative three included and it goes all the way up to five and that's not included so the domain and range on this are exactly the same and that's it